This video is about multiplication and the concept of multiplication. Students in about grade two should be introduced to multiplication and it should be introduced as repeated addition. Again, just like we did in addition and subtraction, we should be looking at stories to help students make a visual representation of what multiplication is. Have a look on the board. Tom has two groups of three stars. How many stars would he have altogether? So we can see that we have two groups of three. If we add those together with three, four, five, six. We should be also encouraging students to count on, to start at the end of a group and then move on to the next group and subsequent groups. Once we have this initial concept of multiplication embedded with our students, we need to build on that understanding to look at patterns such as skip counting patterns and developing automatic responses for simple multiplication sums. Arrays can be used for student, to help students to better understand the relationship between groups. On our board, you can see that our first diagram has two groups of three bears. Students need to be convinced that two groups of three bears is the same as our second diagram, which shows three groups of two bears. Getting students to count on at the end of the first group is one way that we can help students who are struggling with this concept. So with our first diagram, we'd start with three, count on four, five and six to have a total of six bears. In our second diagram, we'd start with two and count on from two, three, four to finish the second group and five, six to finish the third group of bears. To further develop the concept of multiplication, we need to build on strategies and skills including thinking about how multiplication of bigger numbers can be achieved through breaking down bigger numbers by renaming. If we have a look at our first example, we've got 54 times 6. We need to teach students, and this is probably in about grade 3, that 54 times 6 can be renamed to be 50 times 6 plus 4 times 6. 50 times 6 is 300. If students are having trouble with this, talk about 5 times 6 being 30 and we have an additional zero. So 50 times 6 would be 10 times bigger and would be 300. 4 times 6 would be 24. So our 54 times 6 becomes 300 plus 24, which is 324. From this renaming concept that we've just discussed, students need to understand how it can be applied to bigger multiplication sums. This is usually done in grade four or sometimes grade five. Our second example, 25 times 17, can be renamed to be 25 times 10 plus 25 times seven. Both of these multiplication sums can be further renamed. 25 times 10 can be renamed to be 20 times 10 plus five times 10. While the second part of our equation, 25 times 7, can be renamed to be 20 times 7 plus 5 times 7. We can then find answers to each part. So 20 times 10 would be 200, 5 times 10 would be 50, 20 times 7 would be 140, and 5 times 7 would be 35. Now we could rename these again, and certainly if students were struggling, I would rename the 140 to be 100 plus 40, and the 35 to be 30 plus five. But by this stage, hopefully many of our students won't need that additional step of renaming, and will simply be able to add 200 plus 50 plus 140 plus 35 to get an answer of 425. The process of renaming is really important in multiplication because it leads to the idea of long multiplication or multiplication of two digit numbers. Our example here we can see is 25 times 17. 
just as we did the other way a minute ago in our video. To do this, we've got to teach children again to work from right to left. So we start with the seven in our 17 and we go seven times five is 35. We write down our five and carry our three into the tens column. We then do seven times two is 14, plus our three gives us 17, representing 175. We then put down a zero. This zero is extremely important to understand. This zero comes because the next number that we're using is a one in our tens column, and that zero represents the zero on the 10. We then do the second sum, one times five to give us five, one times two to give us two. At that point, we must teach children that we're adding, just as we did in the previous example. So again, we do it from right to left. Five plus zero is five. Seven plus five is 12. Put down your two and carry your one. One plus two is three, plus the additional one is four. Once we have long multiplication embedded with our students, we need to have it supported by estimation and calculator use. The idea of estimation is extremely important in our multiplication because when we move on to the final step of multiplying decimal numbers, if students don't do estimates, they find it hard to place the decimal point in the correct position. This final step of multiplying decimals is shown here with the equation 6.31 times 1.4. The first step in this multiplication of decimals is the most important step. And that step is to do an estimate so we know roughly what the answer is going to be to our sum. So if we have a look over on the right, we've got estimate. We've got 6.31 is approximately equal to 6. 1.4 is approximately equal to 1.5. If we do that multiplication sum, we'd get 6 times 1.5 is equal to 9. So we know that our final answer will be really close to 9. So let's do our 6.31 times 1.4 using our vertical rule. We start with our 4 and we go 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12, place our 2 down and put our 1 above our 6. 4 times 6 is 24, plus our 1 more that we carried will make 25. Put down our 0. This time we put down our 0, not because the 1's in the 10's column, but the 1 is in a column that is 10 times bigger than our 4. We do our multiplication. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 times 6 is 6. We now do our addition. 4 plus 0 is 4, 2 plus 1 is 3, 5 plus 3 is 8, and 2 plus 6 is 8. We get an answer to our sum of 8834. Our last step is to put our decimal point in there. And the easiest way to do that is to look back at our estimate. Our estimate is that our answer would be close to 9. So we would place our decimal point here to make our answer 8.834. You can see that the estimate's really important. If we don't do that estimate, we could be wondering where to place that decimal point.